Hi, Dan Johnson here at Spring at Sebring 2012, and we're talking today with Don Ayers. He's the president of U.S. Sport Aircraft, and they are the representative for the Czech Sport Aircraft and the Sport Cruiser. It's an airplane we know very well as the Sport Cruiser. We also know it as the Piper Sport for a one-year period. And they are having some good success with this airplane, and this team is doing a great job. You have a new airplane here, though. This isn't the regular Sport Cruiser. This is something new. Don, what is it? That's right. This year we've introduced the Sport Cruiser Classic, and it is uh, classic means pretty much what the name implies. It's a tradi traditional six-pack of instrumentation uh, with a slight upgrade. It's fully IFR capable, and it's designed for the flight school market, for the people who feel more comfortable with uh, analog gauges than the glass panel, and uh, price-wise it's very competitive for the way it's equipped. So for those that don't know, the six-pack refers to six instruments, round analog gauges that sit right in front of the pilot, and by doing what's called an instrument scan, you keep track of just how the airplane is situated in the sky. Things like the Dynon and the Garmin's do that all with fancy electronics, but for an awful lot of pilots, that stuff is sort of foreign territory, and round analog gauges are familiar. And one advantage that they have over the other instruments, you can glance at them and you see what they are right now. You don't have to read or interpret or remember anything, you just see what you've been trained to do and you got it. So in a flight school environment, especially with instructors that are used to round analog gauges, that's a perfect combo. What is the price on this airplane? Uh, actually the introductory price on it is $119.9, ready to fly away, uh, fully equipped, uh, no additional options needed. Uh, we do have one upgrade on it which would be a full NAVCOM radio and a VOR head so you can use it for instrument training also. and. Uh, Basically, uh, at that price, it compares well with uh, entry-level planes in the market. Besides uh, the Sport Cruiser, this is much better equipped for the same amount of money. So, yeah, it's uh, rounding that off to 120,000 in these days. That's a real good number for an airplane that people know very well and which flies very nicely. I know this airplane has very slow stall and is very forgiving in a lot of its qualities, which makes it a pretty ideal airplane for a student to get into and not feel like he or she is just overwhelmed with uh, both the ability to fly the airplane and the instrumentation in it. Not that those six-pack gauges are familiar to a brand new student, but man, you look at that, you light up that dyne on and go, oh my goodness, there's a lot there and it's easy to get distracted from it and not pay attention to flying the airplane, which a student's got to do. Yeah, and uh, I've been surprised at the interest here. There's a lot of interest not only in, with the flight school people, but with uh, Older pilots who are just used to this and uh, don't really want to, or don't want to take the time to learn all the capabilities of the dyna, uh, of, the, of the newer glass panel systems. Uh, we have over uh, right behind us here the Dynon Skyview equipped Sport Cruiser also, which is a top of the line model. But basically, this is the entry level model, and for anyone that wants the traditional instruments, uh, well equipped at a good price. And uh, if you want all the bells and whistles, we have the other one over there. Well, clearly you can go both ways then. Yes. You've got the lower priced, more conventional, uh, familiar equipment, and then you've got the razzle dazzle, latest and greatest. And you're right about the Dynon. I love the Dynon stuff, but I went to one of their three and a half hour classes and went, okay, now I've had a good briefing. Three and a half hours I've had a good breathing. I still need some more flying and then I need some study. Then maybe I'll be really fluent with it, but there's so much information there. It's great, but there's so much information, it's a little daunting. Uh -huh. This would be a little more user friendly for most pilots, wouldn't it, Don? It would, unless you're a fourteen year old kid and they just <laughs> go through the buttons. Yeah, it's right. Second nature. <laughs> Kids are growing up with that equipment, haven't they? Is this airplane available only as a light sport and ready to fly down? Well, it's a good question, Don. Only SLSA that is fully manufactured or you have other combos? It is fully manufactured. Uh, we looked at, uh, well, we've decided that we are only going to do the SLSA, the factory manufactured ones in this co country. We have a lot of people asking about the experimental light sport uh, category. And uh, for a lot of reasons, you got the plane built to the factory and you've got the support behind it and all that kind of stuff. We, uh, we're just doing the SLSA. If a kit is available, I can refer you to somebody in Europe where you can buy one. So it sounds then that you also have a dealer network set up. You got a pretty good dealer network, don't you, that, uh, that Piper adopted, as I recall. We did, and that's uh, one of the legacies of dealing with Piper. Uh, 
they were involved for a year, and during that period, we put a network together of eight dealers, uh, which we since moved up to ten dealers, uh, all across the country. So you can get a demo flight in a sport cruiser pretty much anywhere within a couple hours flight, uh, or a couple hours drive, even uh, just just all over the country. And uh, in addition to that, as far as supporting the airplane, Piper actually. Uh, spent a lot of time, uh, with, they were working on getting their full support network in place during the year. So they could plug all their Piper dealers into this. Now, yes. that means they needed some Rotax training and things like that? Uh, they did, and uh, what we did as soon as Piper pulled out is we decided we immediately brought in a, a very large inventory of parts, and pretty much we, every part that has to come from the Czech Republic is stocked in this country. Uh, at either our Dallas Assembly Center or our Fort Pierce, Florida Assembly Center. Yeah, you just so, jumped ahead of me a little bit there. You guys are not in one, in one you've got these other other satellite people, we'll call them, that right. are helping you and supporting the product in other places. But your company, U.S. Sport Aircraft, have more than one location. You're here in Florida, we're here in Florida. but you're also in Texas. We're also in Texas. We actually have a couple of flight schools here in Florida. Uh, we're, uh, we have a place in Texas, and we're expanding to some more flight schools in the And you're having some sales success too, I hear. So Yeah, uh, the plane has continued to sell well. What a lot of people don't realize is that it was a successful airplane before Piper got involved. It sold well while Piper was involved, and it's continu continuing to sell well now. Yeah, that's Piper, a great summary there. Yeah, they, they did us a, a great service for the short time they were in. It helped us establish a dealer network and uh, got our name out there, and then we still have people uh, asking us, uh, to, uh, about uh, Piper and uh, coming in because it had the Piper name on it. And once they understand the situation, that the support is there and it's the same as it's always been, uh, they're just as happy to have one with the sport cruiser on the side of it. Yeah, it's important that people recognize that Don and his team were involved with the sport cruiser before Piper got involved, while Piper was involved, and now afterwards. So there's a real continuity, and even when Piper decided to bow out, there have been changes in their company. They had to drop their jet project, too, so there's other things going on. But when they left, they said, we have no problem. We like light sport aircraft. Just didn't quite fit in their overall corporate picture, I guess. Stuff beyond my pay grade. But, uh, exactly. but the rest of us are continuing on with the activity, and you guys are continuing to support this product. That's real important stuff. Maybe we ought to go have a look inside the aircraft. You want to do that? This is when my son talks pack. about a six pack, he's going to the beer store. Yeah, he means something a little different, and that's after you get done flying. So, here's the basic six pack, and the scan is an artificial horizon, altitude, and airspeed. There's your main three, and those things you want to track as you fly. These things down here, these gauges, the turn coordinator, the uh, directional gyro, and the vertical speed indicator are things you watch trends with. So the basic idea is you start with the attitude horizon and you scan the other ones and you just keep coming back. It's standard instrument training procedure. Virtually every pilot in America with an instrument rating has studied under this kind of equipment, including me. So those of us who did it that way had to learn the hard way about the Dynon stuff. But this is the basic group that they have. But there's a nice little extra here, the Garmin Era. Uh, this, is the, uh, this is the 510. They make four or five models of this thing. But if you want to have some glass, here's some glass. Plus, you can pull this out and put it in your car and do uh, uh, GPS stuff to get you to the grocery store as well. So pretty nice. But well, one other nice little feature they've added in here, there's, a, there's a, it's a number of nice things that we've looked at on this airplane before. But one little extra thing i got to show you that I think is kind of neat is this control lock. Instead of taking the seat belt and tying it around or instead of putting things on the elevators and ailerons that you might go off and forget, which is not a good thing at all to do, uh, here's a very simple way to isolate the movements in case the wind is trying to flop the surfaces around when you're not around the airplane. You just got it tied down and you went home. What a simple arrangement here with a couple of pins. It's a lightweight piece of aluminum, grips the stick firmly, holds everything just where it ought to be. I like it. It's good stuff. Now, I understand that we're going to look at some of the modern technology in this airplane, too? Fix this in your mind. We'll go look at how a Dynon looks in this grouping. It'll look quite a bit different. Okay, what do we got here? It's as though we got into the time machine and jumped 100 years into the future or something. All those round gauges? Well, there aren't any. It's all square gauges. Actually, they're glass green cockpits. We're familiar with all this hardware we see here, but this is kind of the deluxe end of light sport aircraft. Of uh, not an uncommon, they're not everywhere yet, but there are other aircraft that have this too. This is the dual Dynon Skyview, the 10-inch screens. These things are 
like watching your HD TV at home, but with a lot more information on it. Uh, flanking on both sides there, flanking the Garmin 796, which is one of those devices that with this little button down here, the whole instrument pops out. You can take it inside the FBO or something and do your flight planning, check your weather, other stuff, take it back out and plug it in. Or take it home and review your flight or download it to your computer and other things. It's sort of Garmin's answer to the iPad, if you will. But it makes such a clean installation, and for those that want the deluxe and everything, why not? And once again, we see this very neat little control lock. I think that is a very clever idea. Lightweight, simple, foolproof. You can't fly the airplane until you remove that. You can't take off with gust locks on your tail. And uh, I think it's a great solution to an old problem. So you want to get more information about the Sport Cruiser aircraft from U.S. Sport Aircraft, whether it is the classic model with the analog gauges or the deluxe model with a glorious sky view flanking the Garmin, here's where you want to go. U.S.SportAircraft.com. Pretty simple to remember. U.S.SportAircraft.com. And do you have any information on this airplane on your site yet? I do. We have information on both airplanes and on the sky view, and they're all available on ByDanJohnson.com or BYDanJohnson.com. This and many other videos are available on aircraftreporters.tv.